do those eight things to hit eight figures in revenue. Check out this video to understand the ins and outs of revenue generation, sales expansion, and business productivity. Making seven or eight figures in annual sales is not impossible. It might even be easier nowadays than it was, say, a decade ago, thanks to mobile connectivity, e-commerce, and social media, as well as the global marketplace that an increasingly interconnected planet offers. Watch the show now and learn the habits and strategies that will help you reach financial freedom. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to, how to hit eight figures in revenue and what the things you have to do. Only eight things. Now, before we even get into the nitty gritty, I want, let me talk about something very, very important that a lot of folks don't talk about. It's you need to avoid burnout. Now, people are thinking about, oh, yeah, money, it will come to me as if I work hard. But your number one investment is your health and your family's health. So you need to avoid burnout. You need to manage time to achieve your goals and set as you need to set aside time to rest and grow. As successful business mentors and experts all over the world have said, if you attempt to pull a just keep swimming strategy, your ability to receive awesome things in life starts to lag behind the results you're seeing in your business and in your life. What I'm trying to say here is that if you want to prevent yourself or your team members from self-sabotaging, you need to find a way to balance the interest of life and business, their personal interest versus their business interest. Now, how do you recognize and beat burnout? You first need to be very clear about your lifestyle choices. So sudden lifestyle changes, positive or negative, are indication of burnout. That's because the person who is on the verge of burnout doesn't care much about healthy lifestyle choices and lacks the motivation to take care of his or her health. So if you see this in your own life or you see this in your, in your team members, you need to be very careful. Overthinking. When people are on the verge of burnout, they tend to overthink things. It's okay to worry about work even when you are at home, but if, if you find yourself thinking about it all the time, then it's time to worry. Because overthinking generally does not only cause stress, but also prevents you from enjoying other activities, right? Because if you're thinking about work 24-7, you never, you never have time to, to disconnect. And this is a harbinger, if you will, of burnout and requires immediate attention. Cynicism is a third element here when it comes to recognizing burnout. If you find yourself or a member of your team member, uh, a member of your team, suddenly negative about everything in life, they're constantly pissed, they don't have fun, you need to sit and think about the causes of such a behavioral change, right? Because staying irate, being angry at all times and snapping too often are also harbingers of what's to come. If you have difficulty managing relationships, whether it is a romantic relationship, a professional relationship, or in general, a social relationship, you have to start thinking about what, what is going on because stress bleeds over into almost everything you do, especially how you deal with people. So even if you feel that you're handling your stress properly at work or in life, it might begin to spill over into other realms of your life and could cause cracks, cracks in your relationship, really, if you think about it. Stress causes people to be less patient, to be, to be more involved in unnecessary things and necessary arguments. Some even, some even may completely withdraw themselves and begin to avoid friends and family, right? So this withdrawal may cause stress to worsen ever, even more because alone, they cannot handle that stress. They need help. And Obviously, the consequence that most people are scared about is health issues. Burnout leads to health issues. It leads to medical conditions, right? If you have to work long hours, you're not taking care of your, your health, you're not working out, you're eating, you're having a poor diet. This, All of those things is very bad because we know the long hours lead to eating unhealthy, 
right? Late night networking events lead to excessive drinking. This consequently can trigger some kind of internal destruction. So you got to think about that. So avoid burnout, take care of your health. And I wanted to start the conversation about with that because you cannot hit, you cannot hit eight figures in revenue if you're not healthy. Your health and the health of your team members should be the number one priority before even thinking about strategizing about business or revenue generation. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. Now, let's talk in earnest about the eight tips that you need to implement today to hit eight figures annually. Number one, create multiple streams of income. The thing here is that you cannot hit eight, one or 10 million because eight figures, that's minimum 10 million. You cannot hit that mark, that threshold, if you only rely on one stream of income. As the old sayings goes, you cannot have your all your eggs in the same basket, right? So you want to diversify. You want to put all your eggs in different in multiple financial baskets. So the more streams of income you have, the more likely your chances of earning eight figures. Sure, one income stream can potentially reach the $10 million mark. But again, it can be a bit risky to put all your eggs in one financial basket. So aside from earning income, where basically you are exchanging time for money, you go into to work nine to five, you know, that's just a traditional exchange of time for money. You must invest in other streams to free up time while also reaching financial freedom. So passive income is the main way to do so, whereby you can generate, say, money by creating digital products, for example, or by investing in real, real estate, for example, right? So res residual income from affiliate marketing or rental property income can also get you closer to your eight figure goal. To properly manage different income streams, you need to learn the skill of delegating. You cannot do everything by yourself. You know, a single day has 24 hours and you gotta think about the proper way to delegate. Richard Branson once said that as much as you need a strong personality to build a business from scratch, you also must understand the art, the art of delegation. I have to be good at helping people run the individual businesses and I have to be willing to step back. The company must be set up so it can continue without me. This is a wise man. I love Richard Branson and this is, this is so true. You got to set up the company or all, all your companies in a way that they can run without you. That's the first thing. The first, the second tip is to create products and services people need. There has to be a direct alignment between what the, the market needs and what you are offering. If you offer something the market doesn't need, then you are actually missing the mark. So the products and services you offer have a direct effect on your earnings. And eight figures is only attainable if you focus on price, value, and demand. The PVD model price, value, and demand. So let me give you an example. You got to think about, let's say you are, there is a holiday season and a lot of people are looking for Christmas products. It could be toys, it can be electronics, it could be video games, you name it. If you identify based on thorough research and past experience and future trends that a, a specific product is in high demand around the holidays, go ahead and offer that. So you are increasing your chances of uh, making a big, a big bonanza in the market, right? Consider high ticket products, services, or packages that appeal to some of your most dedicated clients. Again, if you're trying to reach eight figures, you need to either sell a lot of, uh, products that are, you know, priced very low, or you need to sell a few of products that are priced high. So regardless of high ticket prices, new products and services are a good way to earn more money in the new year and decade. Provide more valuable options to your clients and they'll appreciate it all while you scale your business. Now, the third element here is you want to scale properly. Scaling means that you are expanding your company. You are making sure you are growing gradually. You are growing organically. Before scaling your business, 
be certain that your customers will want what you're building because rookie entrepreneurs often make the mistake of overlooking the step, right? So from there, be sure to maintain enough inventory to satisfy the main and bear in mind that most businesses keep popular items at a higher supply because the last thing you want is to have a very popular pro product, something that is just smashing records in the market. People love it. People want it. And people start ordering on the internet and suddenly you run out, you run out of uh, stock. Because what will happen is you'll have disenchanted customers who will really, really, really flock quickly to your competitors. And, you know, we live in a world where the competition is always there. Even if you believe you are in a niche by yourself, you are a monopoly. The competition is, is there. It's just not it may not be visible for you at the moment, but it is there. So scale properly. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still having a conversation around the eight things you need to do to hit eight figures in annual sales. I've already given you actually four. So number one, I said you need to avoid burnout. So take care of your uh, financial health. I mean, your health. Yeah, your physical health. You need to create multiple streams of income, create products and services that people need. And you have to scale properly. Now, let's talk about the, the last four. But before I do so, if you love the clarity and quality of the this content, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you are informed whenever we drop a new show. And we do this every single day. And also like this content, share and comment below. Of course, you like it if you appreciate the value we're giving you now. Seek media exposure. If you want to increase your profits, you need to have some kind of media exposure because utilizing the media is critical when showcasing your business and what you offer to a wide range of possible customers and clients. You need to be very clear here and we need to be very specific. You want to zero in on a specific target. You want to target as specific an audience as possible and don't be scared to refine the audience your ads are targeted to because you have to learn through trials and errors. You have to do A-B testing to know which ads work and which audience responds properly or better to a specific set of ads. You wanna be clear and confident in what you offer and revenue will surely increase, my, my friend. The next thing you wanna do is to craft an effective social media strategy. We live in a world where social media companies have asserted their preeminence. They are everywhere. They are ubiquitous, so you got to count them in. You have to have them as part of your marketing strategy. So uh, when I'm talking about Facebook, when I'm talking about social media, rather, so social media strategy, I'm talking about Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Now you can add more. You can add Pinterest. You can add LinkedIn. You can add uh, TikTok. Again, it depends on your niche. It depends on your target audience, your potential customers. But you got to have the, the, the social media strategy. Don't be scared about paying for ads, for brand exposure, for brand awareness. It might be interesting for you to pay for ads so people, more people can be exposed to your brand and know you and become aware of your brand. Post constant. You want to post content, not post constant. <laughs> you want to post content consistently and with a higher quality. The, the, way, the way it works on social media is that you need to post content, posting content, content posting should be part of your social media, social media blueprint by content. I'm talking about not only written content, but also video and pictures, but consistency and quality are, are critical here because you want to accustom your audience to a, a schedule. You want them to start expecting your content at a certain time. If you if you have the resources and, and budget and staff to post daily, go ahead and do it. If you want to do it every three days, twice a week, or once every two weeks, it's up to you. You want to have, you can also use social media influencers. If you believe that right now, I mean, right nowadays we have so many influencers on, on social media that you can get a, a very affordable influencer to cater to your particular products or services and help him or her bring your products or services to the market. Another way to 
to craft an, an effective social media strategy is to follow competitors and major thought leaders in your industry or niche. By following your competitors, you can know, you can see what they're doing, best practices, you can learn from their mistakes, and you can also improve your own strategy. And, and by following major thought leaders in your industry or niche, you know where the market is heading, right? Because thought leaders are called that for a reason. They are thought leaders. In other words, they come up with the new trains. They talk about, they anticipate new trains. So by following them, you know where the market is going. Number seven, invest in your business in yourself. If you want to hit eight figures, you need to constantly, constantly invest in your business and yourself. So for example, to scale your business, you must reinvest by outsourcing more tasks to focus on growth equipment for more efficient operations, marketing right so investing in other areas of income is crucial but it doesn't stop there be sure to invest in your education to increase your skills and your health don't get burned out don't get burned out so you need to stay active and on top so by doing that not only would you have the right strategy in place but you have the right team in place everything i'm telling you here applies also to your team members especially if you have a small team you want to make sure they are functioning and operational, not only financially, psychologically, cognitively, physiologically, metabolically, you name the whole thing, even and emotionally. Not only do you have to do what's best for your business, but also for yourself and your team. Number eight, then this is the last tip to hit eight figures annually. Connect and socialize with other eight figures, eight figure earners. What I'm trying to say here is that if you want to hit eight figure, you want to hang out with those who are already doing it, who are already earning that much money. Almost every successful entrepreneur has advised this, but that's because it's really important, right? So if you hang around, say five or 10 or 20 multimillionaires, you'll be far more likely to become one yourself. Sometimes it may be better to relocate for the sake of financial growth, right? So it's no secret the bigger cities can bring bigger opportunities. So that is a decision you have to make depending on the type of business you are involved in and where you currently live, it may be worth considering moving out. So making eight figures this year or next in the next five years or 10 years each year may take plenty of effort, but it is not impossible to achieve. So you need to analyze these areas and see where there is room for improvement because better actions will achieve better income in the new year. So everything is possible. Let me quickly give a recap here. Do eight tips, this eight tips to hit eight figures in annual revenue this year and beyond. Number one, avoid burnout. Please avoid burnout. Two, create multiple streams of income. Three, create products and services people need. Four, scale properly. Five, seek media exposure. Six, craft an effective social media strategy. Seven, invest in your business and yourself. Eight, connect and socialize with other eight figures earners. I will see you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.